It's Friday Feedback Friday, the feedback day of the week. Ah, it's Feedback Friday. And yes, we are here on Feedback Friday. Uh, I'm not going... I'll read some comments from Wellness Wednesday because those were interesting. Um, a lot of people agreed with me about unplugging from the conversations about Star Wars because um, uh, they're just too misery inducing. Now I ended up booking a guest for next <laughs> the therapy spit on Star Wars. So I'm super excited for that. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought it was interesting that people, w one of the things people talked about is what's comforting shifts and so we fade out of things somebody had a fascinating conversation and the same realization about sandman and the experiences i'm going to take their framing out because it's more positive than mine it's i can sort of put it to rest um they said sandman's a good example i was unconscious of the abuse because that abuse was simply a fixture of my reality at the time I don't cringe at it. I merely accept that my ignorance was part of me back then. All right. I'll take that narrative. That works for me. Um, if you like this sort of thing, help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for somebody who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. This is the time of the month because the beginning of the month, everybody's cards get charged and people go... Pfft. Patreon always takes a plunge at the beginning of the month when people go, oh, that got charged? So... Um, Patreons are getting a lot of, uh, previews about things that are happening and they're actually, Patreons help shape what happens on this channel and with It's Not Therapy and the various side things I do. So if you want to be a meaningful part of that, it's not for, it's, it's like, you know, a few bucks a month is all that matter, is all it takes um, but yeah, it, it helps. It helps to have that regular thing, right? Because if I do get sick and I do have to handle, cl handle clients for a week, you know, if I don't have the Patreon, I don't get paid. Um, and that's a high wire act that I have been struggling with of late because of the various health issues I've been dealing with. And, um, you know, I did, I, it's, it's nice when I can read something and go, all right, that's, uh, uh, that's a slightly different take on what I said. It's a more positive take. I'll take it. Um, you know, people talked about, uh, this is, this is interesting. One person said they never really bought comics for the dark brooding angst. For comics, they were about the fun escapism and flights of fantasy and a sense of joy and exhilaration in the ridiculousness. It seems to be gone. Um, and that, I mean, to me, it was Spider-Man was a hero who got a cold. And I thought that was the coolest shit. But yeah, to me, it was a world where heroes actually won a slim majority of the time. And so the grimdark just does not work for me. I can lose and get pounded in the face in the real world. Um, but uh, another person, another part of this comment was, I think it may be mostly about figuring out why a thing was comfortable in the first place. Is it that it provided you with a means to connect to others and acted as a social lubricant? If so, the discourse becoming toxic would poison that comfort. If it's comfortable because you see yourself in the media and it speaks to you, it'd make sense that in growing and changing and no longer aligning with the thing in the media that attract, attracted you, you wouldn't get the same comfort. You know, yeah, makes complete sense. Um, another commenter said, you know, they said the same thing about Star Wars. I unsubscribe from groups about pretty much everything I enjoy so I continue to enjoy them. Uh, Along with Star Wars, I've unplugged from Mass Effect, Destiny, Dungeons and Dragons, and pretty much anything I enjoyed as a kid. I stopped watching anything new about Transformers until Bumblebee came out, and that was bomb for the soul. Um, 
you know, they said, I don't get excited about movies or games that are coming out anymore. I felt like I had grown up and the child was suffering until I started protecting my own inner child to continue to enjoy things that are important to me. And I think that is what I'm going to seg into. There were a lot of good comments on that video, but that one segs into what I'm seeing with the hate bombing, you know, over She-Hulk. And what I ended up doing, because I, I don't I don't know why people don't realize any comment that starts, what you don't understand is a wow, you can read my mind? Okay, like I that that's one of those things that just I tune out. And it's not deliberate. It's just an eh. it, it's it's a response I can't help. So any any anything where somebody tells me what is in my mind instead of just telling me what is in their mind, blank. Um, and I realized that part of the reason I was so like, oh, I couldn't figure out why I'm I felt so punched in the gut uh, by the She-Hulk hate and that that comment about, you know, why you find it comforting um, really spoke to me on that because I enjoy Jen because she is a complete fuck up. She's a screw up. People don't like her. People humiliate her. Um, everybody's saying why she's bad. And yet she still got to have a show. I see myself in that. Though I don't get to have a Disney Plus show. But the fact that people hate her so much went from, oh, maybe I can exist to... All right. Yep. People hate women like me. And it's so interesting that the people who feel so attacked by something attack and therefore make people feel attacked. And so the hate just spreads around. It's all freaking dark side of the force shit. And what I ended up doing was an exercise I was actually taught by a police interrogator. You look at the statement and you start picking out emotional keywords and see what they tell you. And the use of punishment, what you don't understand, suffering, all these really pain point, pain point, pain point, pain point. And then a, a, a Leanna Cares client said, you know, it is just people barfing pain onto the internet. Not exact words, but I'm, I'm paraphrasing. That was a really good conversation. He was somebody that actually explained the whole thing in a kind of self-aware way. I won't share it because I know I'll get... <laughs> in in comments because people just lack self-awareness like you all sound like angry badgers to me when I read the stuff um but uh, it it did it it is it is at the end of the day it really seems to have nothing to do with the show and everything to do with what the show failed to soothe and I just do not believe, and this is my own bias coming from the, you know, doing a show and knowing what my intents were for the show back in the day and doing a show that was a form of comfort for men and having that completely misconstrued. If, if, a, if a TV show doesn't come for you, turn it off, Right? Because I got to hear what a horrible slut and defend and, you know, betrayer of women and internalized misogyny and all that stuff because I wanted to be part of a show. It was Friday night. It was the end of the week. It, it was a show that wouldn't, you know, insult women's intelligence, but it was a show to make mainly guys feel like they could have a laugh and relax 
and like boobs and you know it was just it was comforting in that way and the powers that be misconstrued the show called it sexist all that stuff of course we saw the, the numbers with women they were practically on par with men well once i i took over producing um perception is not reality and to have that intent so demonized and to to be told what i was what is like no if you sit down with me i could i could tell you what i'm doing in this show but you know when someone what you don't get that doesn't make you sound like you're open to a hearing so what anybody with a healthy dose of self-esteem does when you come on like a ton of bricks like that is just go mm. not the most mature thing but that's what they're doing internally and because people are so miserable because people are so lonely because people think all they can do is scream and yell and like wounded animal territory I don't know how to deal with this because just getting I mean just getting bombarded by that nastiness on the regular isn't good for my or anybody else's mental health you know I refuse to shut up because people are bullying me but I know that engaging with people who are telling me what I am long term is not good for me. Um, people can't be helped if they don't want to be helped. People can't be soothed if they don't want to be soothed. And I'm really concerned by many markers of this stuff i mean th there's there's social problems right now that come from family and because they come from family media can't solve it media can't make you believe something you don't believe what media does is make give you a perception of whether your belief is normal or not and that's not the same thing so you know shows should be able to tell stories from different points of view because when you actually think about the standard representation of women in a male-centered comic book you know all the women are terrible in a way there too right there's either the um, love interest who's only interested in the guy when he's in his superhero persona and not him as a regular person. Doesn't make women look real great there. It's where the gold digger Lois moniker from Lois Lane comes from, you know. Um, or it's the femme fatale who's trying to lure the the guy away in into into the shadows right use him with her her powerful sexuality doesn't make women look great there either like manipulative temptress not doesn't make women look real great you know or they're some crazy super villain or they're you know aunt may who you know the 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 parent often gets killed in in story women don't look great in male centered stuff if you're looking at it that way and one person said to me that you know men just aren't used to this they aren't used to the thing that women have been subjected to for decades and i'm just gonna let that sit there um I don't I don't know if that's true I'm sure like not all men right but it's an interesting comment 
Now, that doesn't mean... That doesn't mean anybody should be prevented from making entertainment for women based on a female perspective. We have to expect people to know how to adult. And if you don't enjoy the marketing, don't watch the show. If you don't you know, enjoy the the first episode, don't continue watching. I do that with a lot of shows. It's like, this is just not my thing. I'm getting annoyed watching it. I'm not going to go any further or I'll, or I'll pause or I'll do what I did with uh, House of Dragon, which I haven't started yet, but I intended to. But I really enjoyed the seasons of Game of Thrones I binge watched. I absolutely despised the week-to-week speculation when I was watching it actively. Same with WandaVision. I think I would have enjoyed that show a lot more had I just been able to watch through it without all the theorizing and the uh, and the this and the blah and the uh, And it ultimately just became disappointing because, you know, by episode four, it's like there's no way... 80% of these really cool fan theories can possibly be true. So, and so, you know, I waited to watch House of the Dragons. So when I do watch it, I have the best chance of enjoying it. If you're whipped up by a trailer, don't watch the show. I know I am avoiding... Um, all the Wakanda Forever hype. Because I know I'm going to see the movie... And I don't want to get expectations built up so much that, you know, the movie's just meh. So I've been not watching because they, they do the like trailer every hour or something like that now on social media. So it's just somebody warned me about it. I'm like, okay, thanks. But these, what is going on seems to be a form of emotional displacement, emotional projection, that the problem is not a show. The problem is not that. The problem is stuff that's going on in people's lives that, you know, as one person said, Marvel was, Marvel and Star Wars and stuff, that was the thing that you escaped the bully from. You know, you escaped into when you were being bullied as a kid. And, I mean, I went through that with X-Men and the Brian Singer versions. And I, I talked about that. It's like, yeah, I get how that makes you angry. But I was angry at the X2 for two weeks and that was it. Um, But... If you're still feeling that bullied, you deserve better than that. And better than that is not going to come from a TV show. You know, it's the opposite of the Sandman effect. I didn't see, as the commenter said, I didn't see Dream as being so abusive because that was my daily reality. Now that it's not my daily reality... Holy shit, he's a dick, right? But if you, as an adult, are still having to escape your daily reality, something's not right. And the added piece that I learned recently, and I checked it out with a few people and said, that sounds not right, these like red pill, black pill, incel message board type things. I'm not using that as a pejorative. It's just the name of the board. Apparently the average user on those is 16 to 23 years old. 16 to 23 years old. We have fucked up as a society when... Anybody in that age range, 
anybody in any age range, but especially in that age range, is defining their sense of self-worth around whether they've had sex. And I don't think it's about that. I think it's about feeling like they belong, feeling accepted. But the fact that this is a somewhat acceptable way of expressing anger they're walking around with and women are seen as a safe target for that anger. And I unpopular view of mine, I don't really believe a lot of those guys actually mean it. I think the problem is they put women up on pedestals and, and that's discussion for another time. But we got a real social problem. Like that is a parenting problem. That is a family problem. That is fucked up. And no piece of media in the world, in history, can solve for that. Because you see in media what you bring to the table, right? And yeah, if 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 people are that, if their lives are fucking grimdark, no wonder they find the shitty grimdark shit with DC that I can't stand. Um, why they find that validating? Because it's it's not giving them hope for the end to suffering. It's just, I guess contextualizing and giving meaning to the suffering that is never going to end as far as they're concerned. Holy shit. Like, that's scary to think about. And it's so weird to me and, you know, the, the nonsense about safeguarding children. There are 16 to 8 18-year-old year young men in these forums, crying out for fucking help. Where are the people in their lives? That's just unacceptable to me. But I really don't know what to do it, do about it because they're not going to listen to me. Because, you know, you're raised in that environment. You know, the minute you're challenged by a woman, you get so embarrassed that you freak out. And I, I, I think there was some of that with the She-Hulk reaction, too. But, like, I don't know. I know that I, I was worried about doing men's content in the first place. I'm glad I did it. There's been some interesting discussions. A lot of people do like it. But the people I was hoping to reassure that women don't see you that way, they don't want to be reassured. So... Um, it, it's definitely gonna, gonna lend itself to a pivot in the content because no, no point in trying to talk to somebody who won't listen. I make content for the people who will listen. And a lot of people did appreciate that video on Monday. They liked the different point of view. They said, yeah, I didn't see, um, a lot of that. One person said she wants a guide to decoding like girl code because she doesn't understand it either. And as somebody who who had to learn it painstakingly. Yeah, I, I feel that. Um, but yeah, definitely going to be a pivot in. You know. Nobody wants to hug somebody who's scratching and clawing at them anytime they get close. That makes sense, right? Nobody wants to lend an ear to someone who's screaming. No, no one does. Whatever you think you're seeing on the left, no. No one likes those obnoxious people that are yelling at everything. No one likes them. Not even them. So, yeah, interesting. And, and to the people who did enjoy the videos and did take something out of it, Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really worried about what's happening to a subsection of young men. And I mean, things are destroying young women as well, but, and non-binary people, but this is a completely avoidable malaise that it just seems collectively society is just rolling around in and it's not right. So 
if you want to support my content, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K, or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it, coffee.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching, and have a great weekend.